Hello, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video, I'm going to compare the vlogging capabilities of the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III, the Sony RX100 Mark VII, and the Canon PowerShot G5X Mark II, which coincidentally is the camera I'm using to film this opening clip. Now, in this video, you're going to see them filming in both 1080 and 4K quality, so you can compare that for yourself to see whether it's worth making that jump to 4K or not. You're also going to see the impact of built-in neutral density filters, different focal ratios, it's a different aperture and chance for blurring that background, the difference that having an external microphone input can make, because two out of those three cameras now can connect an external microphone. What an exciting time in which we live, eh? In fact, so much so, I'm going to stop blathering on and get on with the comparison. Now, I'm just going to look at the best case scenarios for 1080 and 4K, including stabilization. So if you want to find out more about each of these cameras, just find my separate reviews of each of them, either at cameralabs.com or here on YouTube. Right, let's get on with it. Another day and another camera. This is the RX100 Mark VII. Filming in 4K and I'm using the Rode Wireless Go system here connected to its microphone input. Now you may be asking yourself, why compare these three cameras? Well, they're all released within a few weeks of each other in mid-2019. And while each has its own kind of specialist features, they are also all targeting the vlogging market. So let's have a quick look at what makes them different, or at least starting off with what makes them the same. So they're all pretty pocketable cameras, all based around one inch sensors with 20 megapixel resolution. Now that one inch sensor is about four times bigger than the sensor in most phones. So you're gonna get an upgrade in image and movie quality, especially in very dark or very bright conditions. You also have greater potential for blurring in the background with shallow depth of field effects. All of these three cameras also have screens that flip up above them to face you so you can compose your shot very easily. However, beyond there, the features differ. Now, they all offer 1080 or 4K video with a variety of stabilization modes, but the two Canon cameras bizarrely don't offer any video in 24p. For some reason, Canon's removed that feature. However, it remains present on the Sony, which offers 1080 or 4K in 24, 25 or 30p, and if you film in 1080, it'll also go all the way up to 100 or 120p, depending on the video region, and it'll still record that with autofocus and sound. Now the Canons will also do that frame rate in 1080, but with fixed focus and exposure. So if that's something that's useful to you, look towards the Sony. Now the Canons fight back with lenses that might not zoom as far, but they're brighter, especially at the wide end. F1.8 when set to 24 millimeter, which is what you're gonna be using when you're vlogging like I am right now. What that means is greater light gathering power, lower ISO sensitivities for better quality, also a greater chance to blur the background. And those two Canons also have built-in neutral density filters, which soak up three stops of light, allowing you to more easily deploy those nice motion-friendly shutter speeds, even under bright conditions. But before you think that makes them naturally the better choice for vlogging and for video in general, Sony fights back with an even more compelling feature, which is phase detect autofocus. This is the technology that allows its sensor to confidently refocus on the subject wherever it is on the frame. If it comes closer, if it moves further away, if it goes to the edges, wherever it is, it can confidently keep it sharp without any of that distracting hunting going on in the background. Now, if you're keeping generally fairly still or using modest movements, the Canons may be fine for you. But if you are moving around a lot, the Sony system is way better in that regard. And after that, let's look at sound. Two out of these three cameras have got 3.5 millimeter microphone inputs. This is really exciting uh, because that facility has not been available on this kind of camera before. The two which have it are the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III and the Sony RX100 Mark VII. So the cheapest and the most expensive models in this roundup. And that allows them both to deliver an upgrade in sound quality if you connect an external microphone as I've done now. Anyway, I've rambled on far too much for this segment, so let's get on with the actual comparison. This is a piece to camera test with the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. I'm filming 4K at 25p, and I'm using the built-in microphones to record the audio. So in this test, what I'm gonna do is move towards and away from the camera, don't get too alarmed. The idea being to see whether my face stays in focus, what happens to the breathing on the lights in the background, and also whether you can hear the uh, auto-focusing motors on the lens because the previous Mark II version of this camera was famously quite clicky when it was auto-focusing. So I have face detection enabled, servo AF running, so let's give it a go.
This is a piece to camera test with the Canon PowerShot G5X Mark II. I'm filming this in 4K at 25p with the lens zoomed in just a little bit and open to its maximum aperture, which is actually f2.5 for this new lens. On the G7X Mark III at the same focal length, it's actually close to f2.8. Not a massive difference, but a difference nonetheless. So I'm using the built-in microphones here and the idea of this test is for you to see what happens to the continuous autofocus when I move closer and further away uh, to and from the lens. Keep an eye on me, am I staying in focus? Keep an eye on the lights in the background, see how much they blur and whether they breathe in and out. And also listen out for the autofocus motors on the lens because again I'm using the built-in microphones so any camera motorised noises will be audible. This is a piece to camera test with the Sony RX100 Mark VII filming in 4K at 25p and using the built-in microphones to record the audio. Now I've got the camera zoomed in just a little bit at which point the aperture has closed to f4 so you're not going to get that much blurring but this is really a test to see what the camera does and how the lens sounds when I move towards and further away in a quiet environment using the built-in mics. So keep an eye on me and an eye on those background lights. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs and this is a quick vlogging test with the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. I'm filming this in 1080 at 25p and I'm managing to use a motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second at f1.8 because this camera has a built-in neutral density filter. I've got it enabled now, it's three stops. It's really handy for getting those motion friendly shutter speeds even in daylight conditions like right now. I'm also using the highest form of uh, stabilization on the camera right now. This is dynamic IS set to high, but I'm using the built-in microphone. I'm going to show you what it sounds like, or let you hear what it sounds like, with an external microphone in just a minute. But first, let's switch to 4K. Okay, now I've switched to 4K video, which is a new feature on this latest generation of the Canon PowerShot G7X. You only get it on the Mark III. I still have stabilization set to dynamic, so it is cropping the image in return for smooth stabilization. I'm still using the built-in microphones. So now let's switch to the external microphone. Still filming with the Canon G7X Mark III, but now with an external microphone. This is the first PowerShot G series, at least in the one inch range, to feature an external microphone input. And I have the Rode VideoMic Pro, an older shotgun microphone, connected right now using auto audio levels in the camera so hopefully this is providing an upgrade in sound quality but otherwise this is a best case scenario that you're now seeing on this camera with the G7X Mark III. I'm filming in its best quality 4K 25p mode. I'm using the ND filter to deploy a nice motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second. I have the aperture wide open to f1.8 so this is the maximum blurring that you're going to get. I'm using the best stabilization mode that is uh, dynamic IS set to high so there is a bit of cropping if you went for a more modest setting you wouldn't be so tight on your face as I am here and of course again that external microphone so this is the best case scenario for the G7X Mark III let me know what you think of it Hi I'm Gordon from Camera Labs and this is a quick vlogging test with the Canon PowerShot G5X Mark II now I'm filming this in 1080 at 25p using the best quality stabilization mode which is dynamic IS set to high. I'm also using the built-in microphones because that's all that's available on this camera. Unlike the G7X Mark III and the RX107 there is no external microphone input. This camera does however have a built-in neutral density filter and that is allowing me to easily deploy a nice motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second even when I have the lens set to its maximum aperture of f1.8 here for the greatest possible blurring. Let me know what you think of that quality in the comments as I now switch to 4K. Okay now I've switched to 4K video on the G5X Mark II. This is a new feature on the latest Canon PowerShots. They're the first models to offer 4K. It's uncropped at least with the normal stabilization. I'm still filming at 50th of a second in f1.8 
auto ISO and still with the built-in microphones, still with dynamic stabilization set to high and the neutral density filter enabled. So this, uh, well that was a bit of a mouthful wasn't it? Um, this represents the best case scenario for vlogging with this camera because I can't connect an external mic at this point. It's already operating at its best quality. So let me know what you think in the comments. Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs and this is a quick vlogging test with the Sony RX100 Mark 7. I'm filming this in 1080 at 25p with the most powerful stabilization mode enabled. That is uh, intelligent active steady shot. That's only available for 1080. Um, using the built-in microphones and I'm filming this at a motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second. Now this camera does not sadly have a built-in neutral density filter and neither does it have that bright an aperture when you've got it zoomed out. It's only at f2.8 but that does mean exposure wise that I am actually able to deploy that motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second at this frame rate. So it's actually worked out okay for motion but in terms of depth of field you'll find that the two Canon models that I'm comparing it against will have a slightly shallower depth of field, a little bit more blurring in the background. But now, let's switch to 4K. Okay, still filming with the RX100 Mark 7, but now switching to 4K video. And I should say that Sony has now added face and eye detection to its movie mode. Eye detection wasn't available before, and I can see a little box over my eye in the screen over the top. I should also note that the stabilization mode, now I'm in 4K, has reduced just to active steady shot, but that's still a step up from what you had on the previous model, so hopefully it should look steadier than before. Cracky, that is a bit of a loud scream, so at that point, I'm gonna switch to its new feature, an external microphone input. Okay, still filming with the RX100 Mark 7 and using its brand new feature, a microphone input. Yes, this is the first Sony RX100 series to have an external mic input. We only had to wait until the seventh generation, but we got there in the end. And of course, the irony, or perhaps the coincidence, is that it happens only two weeks after Canon introduces it on the G7X Mark III. But at least we now have two options with a mic input. So let me go over the settings once more because this represents the RX107 at its best quality in all the settings. This is a best case scenario. So I'm filming in its best quality video mode of 4K, in this case at 25p. I've got the best stabilization on offer in 4K, which is Active Steady Shot. I'm using an external microphone, which is a Rode VideoMic Pro. That is a small shotgun microphone. A fairly old one, but hopefully you should hear an upgrade in sound quality. I'm filming with the lens at its widest 24mm and its maximum aperture of f2.8. And because that is a little bit slower than the Canon uh, models optically, it has allowed me to still deploy a motion friendly shutter speed of a 50th of a second, even though there is sadly no neutral density filter offered on this camera. That's one of the downsides, but the upside is that you do get that much longer optical zoom range. And of course, the other thing that you're getting over the Canons here is phase detect autofocus. So it should be more confident of focus on me as I move around the frame or as you go closer or further away. This is an outdoor vlogging test clip with the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark III. It's a very, very bright sunny day today in Brighton. I've got the neutral density filter enabled here, but I still have to film this with the aperture close to f8 and a shutter speed of a hundredth of a second. So it's not a motion friendly shutter, not too far off, only double what I'd like it to be, but that aperture is closed down, so I'm not gonna get any depth of field blurring here, I'm afraid. Um, I'm filming this in 4K at 25p using the strongest stabilization mode. Now this does crop the image a bit, so if you can hold uh, more steadily than I can, then you can go for a milder stabilization mode and get a slightly wider field of view. But otherwise, this is what you're getting. Okay, I'm still outside with the G7X Mark III on a very sunny day, same exposure setting, still filming in 4K. I've reduced the stabilization to the standard IS mode, so I'm getting wider coverage, although perhaps not quite as smooth footage as a consequence, but much more exciting than that, I've connected an external microphone. I'm using the Rode Wireless Go. You might see the transmitter here on uh, my collar, and I've got the receiver unit connected to the G7X Mark III's microphone input because it becomes one of the only cameras around right now of its class which has a microphone input. Now, I don't have the, uh, the wind shield on the microphone at the moment, and I have just moved into a windy area. So I'll stand this way around and hopefully that'll look a bit better. Okay, so G7X Mark III filming with the Rode Wireless Go. 
This is an outdoor vlogging test with the Canon G5X Mark II. Now this camera has a built-in neutral density filter so I have it enabled because it's such a sunny day but I'm still not quite able to achieve a motion friendly shutter speed. I'm filming this in 4K at 25p, a hundredth of a second, certainly twice as fast as I really want to be but I've had to close the aperture right down to f8 so that's not ideal for one inch sensor and it's also obviously completely unsuitable if you want to blur the background. So if you want to do that sort of thing you've got to film when it gets a bit darker. Um, I'm using the standard stabilization mode here and because this camera does not have a microphone input well you're hearing the sound with the built-in microphones and it's just got a little bit breezy now I'm vlogging with the Sony RX100 Mark VI outdoors in 4k at 25p it's very very bright and there's no neutral density filter on this camera so I am filming this an emotion unfriendly shutter speed of 800th of a second and with the aperture close to f8 so it's not going to be any blurring of the background due to a shallow depth of field and if you see any birds fly past they might look a little bit choppy I'm also recording this with the built-in microphones on the camera but the RX100 7 has one feature that not a lot of other cameras have and that is the ability to connect an external microphone so let's do that now I should mention that I'm using active steady shot that is the strongest stabilization available in 4k video still filming outdoors with the sony rx100 mark 7 i've reduced the stabilization mode to standard here uh, but the more important thing that i've changed is i've connected an external microphone now i know i was wearing it in the last clip but i actually have it connected this time it's the rode wireless go which i have connected to my collar here this is a wireless microphone system so i have the transmitter connected to my collar and the receiver connected to the three and a half millimeter microphone input on the RX100. So even though the neutral density filter does unfortunately not make the RX107 perfectly ideal for vlogging, it does have so many other features in its favor. You've got the 4K video with confident phase detect autofocus, really good face and eye detection. You've got effective stabilization, a screen that flips up to face you, microphone input, Crikey, the list goes on and on. If only it had that ND filter and a slightly brighter lens. But that's the sacrifice you pay if you want that big zoom range on this model. Me personally, I wish they would do a version of the RX100 Mark V with a microphone input because I love that lens. Anyway, on with the rest of the video. Okay, for my verdict, I've gone back indoors and I'm recording this using my Rode NT-USB in a nice quiet room. It's amazing the difference the audio makes when you do it properly, right? Okay, so what do we learn from these clips when it comes to choosing the best camera for vlogging only? First, while I'd say the viewfinder and longer zoom range of the G5X Mark II make it a more desirable all-round camera than the G7X Mark III, especially for stills photography, they don't really bring anything to pure vlogging. So for this particular video, I'm going to concentrate on comparing the G7X Mark III versus the RX100 Mark VII. In terms of video quality, both the G7X Mark III and RX100 Mark VII offer a step up in resolution when switching from 1080 to 4K. But while the 1080 resolution is similar on both models, I found the 4K on the Sony is visibly resolving more detail. I confirmed this in separate resolution tests. But to my personal taste, I actually prefer the colours and tones from the Canon in these videos that I showed here. So in terms of video quality, it really depends on your personal preferences and also whether you can fine tune the colours on either model to taste. Let me know which ones you thought looked better in the comments. In terms of lenses, the RX100 Mark VII may offer a more flexible range for travel, but when it comes to vlogging alone, both share the same 24mm starting point. For me then, the lens on the Canon wins for vlogging overall as it's over one stop brighter at the wide end, allowing you to use lower ISO sensitivities for better quality under the same conditions, while also achieving slightly shallower depth of field effects, a bit more blurring in the background. The Canon lens also has a built-in neutral density filter, making it easier to deploy motion-friendly shutter speeds, especially outdoors. In terms of stabilization, Canon used to lead Sony here, but the latest active steady shot on the RX100 Mark VII does a great job, and I'd say brings them both to a similar level. In terms of autofocus though, the Sony is a clear winner with its phase detect system, easily keeping faces, eyes, or anything else you want pin sharp wherever it moves across the frame. Whereas the Canon lacks confidence in comparison, taking much longer to initially lock on to me or indeed any other subject and not always keeping up with changes in distance. 
In terms of audio quality, I personally thought the Canon's internal microphone sounded a little bit better than the Sony's in my three tests here, but both allowed a significant upgrade with their microphone inputs. Now, you may not have personally liked the sound quality of the two microphones that I tried with it, but the fact is you can try any microphone with these two cameras, and it really does transform their audio quality having those microphone inputs. In terms of other features, Canon's G7X Mark III is the only one to offer live streaming direct to YouTube over its Wi-Fi. And while I got it to work in my tests, I found that my own internet connections just weren't fast enough to support it reliably for more than a minute or two, so your mileage may vary. My internet connection at home only has a 5 megabit upload, so you're really going to want more than that to do it reliably. Both cameras can also keep vertical video upright for use on phones, although when I use the supplied apps from Canon and Sony to copy the videos to my Galaxy S7 phone, the Sony XAVCS files wouldn't play their audio, they were silent. Now this is a compatibility issue with Android phones and meant I had to actually convert the Sony videos on my computer first and then copy them back onto the phone which is not particularly convenient in a mobile workflow environment is it? But it just wasn't a problem with the Canon videos. I copied them across and they played absolutely fine on my phone. In terms of more advanced video features though, the Sony wins with log profiles for grading, support for 24p frame rates, that's strangely absent on the Canon, and way better slow motion with sound and autofocus when filming at 1080 120p, as well as offering the HFR high frame rate modes up to 1000 frames per second. In terms of price, the Canon G7X Mark III comes in comfortably cheaper, just 750 bucks compared to 1200 for the RX100 Mark VII, and that alone could decide it for you. The Sony is a better featured overall camera, especially for photography, but it is a lot more expensive. Ultimately, there's still no perfect vlogging camera as far as I'm concerned, but we are at least getting closer, especially with the addition of microphone inputs. Now if Canon added phase detect autofocus to the G7X Mark III, or if Sony added a microphone input to the RX100 Mark V-A, then this conversation might now be over. Now if you like the G7X Mark III but don't need 4K live streaming or the microphone input, you should look for deals on the earlier Mark II. And if you like Sony's quality and particularly its autofocus, but you don't need the long zoom or microphone input of the Mark VII, then check out the Mark V-A. I've got links to all of them below. Right, that's it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe if you found any of this useful. And uh, also check out my full reviews of each of these cameras at cameralabs.com. I also have videos about them all on YouTube. Right, that's it for this one from the streets of Brighton. I'll stop bothering the tourists and the locals and the shopkeepers. And bid you farewell. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.